we're going to be taking a look at some games from one of my favourite genres, 2D scrolling beat-em-ups. What I thought I'd do is choose my favourite scrolling beat-em-up from each of the main consoles released before the year 2000. This will include arcade ports and console exclusives. I'll also be taking a look at my favourite scrolling beat-em-ups for handheld consoles from around that time. Now I'll be doing this list in order of console release year, not the individual game. So let's begin with a late release for the Atari 2600. Now there is one series of games that will appear a lot in this video, and although it's one of my favourite series, the games featured in this video won't always be that great. One example is this one here, the 1989 Atari 2600 port of Double Dragon. Being that there isn't a lot of choice for this system, it just had to be this one. This was quite an ambitious port, and a two-player co-op feature is a big positive. Unfortunately, that's really where the positives end. The system just didn't have enough power to produce an enjoyable port, and it's one that's best avoided. Entertainment system. The NES had a few decent scrolling beat em ups to choose from, and I've gone for probably my favourite game on the entire system Double Dragon 2. This adapted version of the arcade game featured two player simultaneous co op, fantastic graphics and sound, and presented a real challenge, especially in later levels. It's one of those games that I often go back to play, and I enjoy it every time. As far as other standout titles go, I'd have to mention Capcom's Mighty Final Fight. This spin-off of the classic arcade game featured some awesome graphics and a superb soundtrack. The only thing really letting it down was the absence of a two-player co-op mode. The Sega Master System didn't really have that many scrolling beat-em-ups, so I've chosen yet another version of Double Dragon. This port does feature two-player co-op, and it's pretty faithful to the arcade version. The only thing that I feel really lets this one down is the hit detection. It can become really frustrating when punches and kicks fail to connect. Although it isn't strictly a scrolling beat-em-up, I just have to mention Renegade. This is one of my favourite games on the system, and it's a really slick adaptation of the classic arcade game. Well, I did warn you that one series would feature a lot in this episode, and for the PC Engine, I've chosen Double Dragon 2. This was a Super CD game, which took inspiration from both the arcade and NES versions. The graphical style is bold, and features some great character design. Being a Super CD release, they really took advantage of the technology by producing a fantastic high quality soundtrack which helps set the scene for each stage. Fans of the genre and this series should really check this one out if they haven't already. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Moving on to the Atari 7800, I've chosen yet another port of the first Double Dragon game. And thankfully, this one was a lot better than the version on the Atari 2600. This port also arrived in 1989, and even with the hardware limitations, it does look pretty good. 
Unfortunately, the gameplay does let it down, and it's incredibly difficult, which really spoils the enjoyment. Now, the Sega Mega Drive had some fantastic scrolling beat-em-ups, so let's take a look at a few of them before I reveal my favourite. Now, there is no way that I wasn't going to at least mention the following games in this episode. The Incredible Port of Golden Axe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist, and once again, Double Dragon. These were some of my favourite games on the Mega Drive, and ones I always enjoy going back to. Now, choosing my favourite Mega Drive beat-em-up was always going to be easy. It is, of course, Streets of Rage 2. There really isn't anything negative to say about this release in the series. The graphics, stage design, characters and gameplay are flawless, and it has one of the best soundtracks in video game history. Nintendo Game Boy. It's Double Dragon time again! This was one of the games I remember playing so much on my original Game Boy. It was incredible being able to play a version of one of my favourite arcade games on the go, and many batteries died during my time with this one. The Atari Lynx was one of those consoles I didn't spend a lot of time with when I was growing up, but the games I did see and play really intrigued me. When I saw the quality of some of the arcade ports on such a small screen, I was mesmerised, and one of these was a port of Tecmo's Ninja Gaiden or Shadow Warriors. Not only does it look impressive, but it plays very well. They did cut back some of the stages from the arcade original, but that doesn't stop it from being a great port and one of my favourite games on the system. There were some very impressive scrolling beat-em-ups released for SNK's Neo Geo, including The Incredible Sengoku 3. This is definitely one of my favourite games in the entire genre, but surprisingly, it's not my favourite. That goes to 1992's Mutation Nation. Now don't get me wrong, I'm well aware of how technologically superior other games are on the system but I just get so much enjoyment out of this one every time I play it. For the Sega Game Gear, we're going back to Streets of Rage 2. This adaptation of the Mega Drive game was very impressive, with superb visuals and a great version of the soundtrack. There were some notable things missing from this version, including the removal of Max as a playable character. These cutbacks are disappointing, but that doesn't stop this from being an amazing, handheld conversion of one of the greatest games in the genre. Super Nintendo was another console that had some fantastic entries in the genre. 
from impressive arcade ports like Turtles in Time, to exclusive sequels of arcade games such as Final Fight 3. But my choice takes us back to the Double Dragon series again, with Super Double Dragon. I remember picking this up late in the system's life after my focus had shifted to one-on-one -on -one fighting games in the early 90s. I was so impressed with it that it quickly became one of my favourite games on the system, adding a level of complexity to the combat not seen in previous entries in the series. The moveset included the usual punches and kicks, but with variations depending on the direction held. There was a block and counter system, and special attacks. It's a game I played over and over and over, and it's definitely one of my favourite games in the genre. After the disappointment of the Super Nintendo version, it was the Mega CD that would be the system of choice when it came to the best home port of Final Fight. The return of my player of choice, Guy, the inclusion of a two-player mode, the missing stage and boss fight against Rolento, it was all there. The soundtrack was revamped to make use of the CD-based hardware, and there was even a time attack mode included. I remember sticking down an arcade power stick right in front of my old CRT TV just to try and recreate the feeling of being in the arcade. Final Fight CD was, and still is, one of the best ways to experience this game outside of the arcade. Saturn. I'd imagine a lot of viewers would choose Guardian Heroes as the Saturn's best beat-em-up, and although I think it's a superb game, the jumping between planes really spoils it for me. So, with that in mind, I'd have to give it to the Dungeons & Dragons collection. This incredible two-disc compilation features both Tower of Doom and Shadow over Mistara, and makes use of the console's 4MB expansion cartridge. These games are some of the finest examples of the genre, featuring a level up system, a variety of spells, and different types of weapons and armour. Shadow Over Mistara was one of the last Capcom arcade beat-em-ups of the 90s, and both of these games were the perfect fit for Sega's 32-bit system. Finally, we have the Sony PlayStation. And in a time when 3D polygons were all the rage, there wasn't a lot to choose from. We did, however, have the Japanese-only release, Niketsu Oyaku from Technosoft, which would also see a release on the Sega Saturn. The presentation of the game is fairly average given the hardware, and we'd already seen more impressive games in the genre previously. The gameplay does feel a bit slow, but the variety in moves for each character does prevent the game from becoming dull. It's not the greatest example of the genre, but it's definitely worth checking out. this episode. I really hope you weren't too disappointed with some of the choices I made. Now if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for future content. And I'll see you next time.